So we defined a homogeneous ODE. So now we're ready for our uh, theorem. A okay, first order uh, homogeneous ODE becomes separable after the substitution either u equals x over y or u equals y over x. Now we're going to prove this. So when I prove this, we're going to go with the y over x version. And you could prove it for the x over y. All you really have to do is change the role of x and y. So it's basically the exact same proof. So we're going to go prove it for y over x. We're going to prove it for that version of homogeneous right there. What's the substitution? Substitution. Substitute. Tush. I don't know. <laughs> Substitution. Is that spelled right? Close enough. Close enough. How about that? After the sub. So we know what the form looks like. I wrote it down. That was the last thing I wrote down last class. So that's what we're going to be starting with. So we're given this right <coughs> here. And we also are assuming that it's homogeneous, so <coughs> we're going to go with the second version here. And this ODE is homogeneous. So that means we're going to let u equal y over x. And I'm just looking back in the notes so that y over x, that means our p of xy is rewritten as x to the n g of u, and our q function, they do have to be have the same order, which I'll <coughs> go back up in the definition of a homogeneous ODE and write that in, but they have to have the same order. And I need a second function right here. We'll use, we'll go with G1 and G2 of U. So that's what it means to be homogeneous. You can uh, basically factor out some X to the ends and then write it as a function of U. So we did some examples yesterday. Uh, oh, it's already written in the so here's our definition of a homogeneous ODE. They have to have the same order right here. So they both have to have the same order n, or else this proof's not going to work. So, uh, so I'm going to rewrite this, and that's pretty easy to do. Uh, however, I made a substitution. What do you do when you make a substitution? What else do you have to do? So when you make a u sub, what else changes? The bounds. So there's no bounds. The dx. The dx dy may change, right? So <coughs> if I basically take out, <coughs> so I'm going to rewrite the substitution that we're making as uh, ux equals y. That should be pretty easy to see. You just multiply by u. So we got our ux equals y. And now I'm going to take the derivative of this right here. So this is just like when you take out x and put in some function, uh, uh, rewrite it as u. So applying the derivative operator, we have to do this in kind of a strange way. There are other ways to do it. But I'm going to apply the derivative operator like this. We have du times x plus I have the product rule here, u dx equals dy. 
Uh, I could apply it in a way that's more familiar to you. I'll do that a little further over to the right here. You can take a, U, a DDU, DDX, or DDY. It doesn't matter which of those three you do. I'm going to take a DDY. So what's the derivative of the right side? One. One. Now left side's got product rule. So if I do the left side, I'm going to leave everything as uh, the d uh, variable over d other variable notation. So I'm going to write as du dy x plus u dx dy equals one. So any questions on, on that right there? So that's probably a form you're more used to doing. I could have done it with x, a ddx instead. How do I turn that form into the form that we wrote down a minute ago? Multiply it by dy. Multiply it by dy. That's it. So if I multiply by dy, I get the form on the left side. And I'll just reorder stuff. So it's x du plus u dx equals dy. So you can apply it either way. You're doing the same thing. You're doing the product rule. It just kind of depends on how you write it out. So occasionally, it's a little faster to just apply the uh, derivative operator, not with respect to any particular variable. All right, so what this tells me is where I see dy is going to be replaced by x du plus u dx. So things are going to get co more complicated for a minute. <coughs> So I'm going to make, when I make my sub, y is going to be removed, y is going to be replaced by ux, and dy is going to be replaced by x du plus u dx. So those are the two substitutions I'm about to make. In addition to that and that. So our whole ODE is basically going to be changed around. So we're going to sub in all those at the same time. So I see my ODE, I'll rewrite it one more time. So what we're really changing are the two <laughs> coefficient functions. Like those are like swapped out from what's right above. Um, we're really making this substitution here. So where you see y is going to be replaced by ux, and then where you see dy is going to be replaced by this extra uh, product rule stuff. Uh, so you can kind of think of it like we're taking out y and subbing out for y. So let's take care of this. So our p of xy is now x to the n g1 of u. dx does not change plus x to the n g2 of u and our dy is now x du plus u dx equals zero. So I would not say that this is obviously separable. This looks worse than what we started with. So what's an easy algebra move I can do right away? Factor. Factor what? Factor. I can factor an x to the n out. Uh, and then I'm going to go ahead and divide by x to the n. I also distributed at the same time. So I divided by x to the n to cancel that out, or factor cancel it. Um, and then I've distributed my g2 of u across the sum. And just like before, if this is going to be separable, let's go ahead and start grouping up similar stuff. So I see my dx <coughs> terms, so I'm going to group those together. So I'm kind of combining in different ways now. So I'm going to group those two together. So I'll put my du function out front, which is g2, I'll write it as x g2 of u du plus I have g1 of u plus u g2 of u 
dx. So any questions on these algebra moves here? So this is almost separated. You should be able to separate at this point. So what do I have to move around? Let's look. No, I can't really move the dx. I can move, how do I get this x out of here? Divide by x. Divide by x, so that's easy. So we're going to get a 1 over x. What about everything in front of dx? Divide by all that stuff. So that's all u stuff. There's no x's inside of there. So I'm just going to divide by that as well. <coughs> so we're going to be left with g2 of u divided by g1 of u plus u g2 of u du. Hey, look, it's separable. Got our u's with the du, our x's, or there's really just one over x with the dx. I can go to the next step. I can, what's the integral of this uh, x part? X. Ln x. Uh, what's the antiderivative of our const of our zero? Jeez, Freudian slip. <laughs> C. C a constant. <laughs> now, if I don't know anything about g1 and g2, I have no idea what that derivative is on the left. So I, there's nothing I can do with that in this form. So there we go. If we can solve that left antiderivative, we will find the answer. All right, this is separable. And this gives you a taste of what the proofs are going to be like in the future. So we'll be starting with some uh, differential equation with some uh, assumption, like homogeneous was our assumption here, and then we'll do some algebra, some calculus change it around to something that we can solve. So that's basically what the next probably six chapters are. We're doing things very similar to this. All right, and when you finish a proof, you can draw a little box and fill it in. Yeah, there's some reason for it. I forgot what it was, but it's just what they, they also use a QED which uh, stands for some Latin stuff, but we mathematicians would say quite easily done, whether or not your proof was, this proof wasn't that bad, uh, but there are certainly lots of proofs that are that bad. All right, so we're ready to answer a question. So what if we chose the wrong um, that like the, if we didn't choose the, if we chose the wrong homogeneous order? So, well, so what I didn't show is that this works if you let, uh, instead of u equals y over x, if you let u equal x over y. Oh, that's so I didn't prove that. But the proof is exactly the same. You're just basically swapping the role of x and y. So at the end, you'll basically get this, except you'll see a y here. And... That's pretty much it. Your g1 and g or g2 will be functions, uh, slightly different functions, but this, you'll still get the exact same form at the end. Uh, okay. So it really doesn't really matter what we choose. You have to, I mean, I'm going to give you an ODE. You have to first convince yourself it's homogeneous. You have to write, rewrite it in these forms, in the homogeneous form factor out your x to the n or y to the n, and then you have a separable <coughs> p. So you'll see the steps we're going to do. Uh, there's another note before we do some problems. So if the ODE can be written dy over dx equals p of xy over q of xy.
Oh, there's, all right, this is really important. There's no comma. So if you can write it as the quotient of two functions of the product x, y, uh, then it's homogeneous. No, so these right there are not x, those are functions of one variable, which is the variable x times y. What about the f? Um, that would be like the original form it was in. Uh, so if you can write it as basically a quotient of functions of x times y, then it's a homogeneous function. Uh, then you can write it as x to the n g1 of u divided by x to the n g2 of u. Which of course your x's cancel and you just got g1 over g2. And this will be homogeneous of order 0. So is there an obvious choice here? So there's two possibilities. We can let u equal y over x, or u equals x over y. Is there an obvious choice in this problem? Do you see any x over y or y over x? Not really. So this example, I don't think it matters which of the two ways we go. So just so we're on the same page, I'm going to have you go x over y. <coughs> So we're going to just choose that one. So u is x over y. So y, uh, uy equals x. So let's go ahead first. Let's show that they're homogeneous before we solve this. Uh, I'm going to flip back to the definition of homogeneous. So if we're going with x over y, we have to rewrite our functions fxy as y to the n h of u. So we have to basically factor out a y to the n. Does it look like a y factors out of any of these functions? So here's our first, uh, here's our two coefficient functions. Can I factor a y out of those? No. Not really, no. So we're going to do, it's probably an order zero in this case, because I can't really factor any y's out. Uh, what we're going to do is basically take all of our x's and we're going to write them as u times y. So that's what we're going to do. So there shouldn't be any, if you look at the right side, there should be no more x's when we're done. So therefore I'm going to take all my x's and swap them out for u y's. So do that right now. I'm just rewriting the coefficient functions below right here, not writing all the... If I wrote the entire ODE, I'd have to take out dx and go with y du plus u dy. I don't want to write all that stuff in there yet. 
because I'm not sure they're homogeneous. So I'm just kind of rewriting the coefficient functions. All right, if we look at the right side, what order ODE do I have, or what order homogeneous function do I have? Y is raised <laughs> to what power? One. So I got to order one on the right. So this is Y. I don't want to write first power. I'll write it, but I'm going to erase it in a, one second because I don't want you to think of Y derivative. If I write Y one, we think of Y prime. So there's our to order one. And what is our H of U function? Almost negative u. So our h of u is negative u. It's a function of u. Does that make sense before we go back to the more difficult side? It's almost too easy. There's a single y that's degree one, and then what's left over is basically times negative u. That's our function of u. So that's all that's going on here. If you're thinking, you're probably doing too much work. I'm just using a definition, that's it. We're going to have to do a little bit of algebra on the other side. So on the other side, all I did was take out x, put in uy, and then I just uh, squared, distributed my power right there across the product. This better be degree 1. So I need to factor a y out of here eventually. I can definitely factor a y out of the second term, that's easy. What can I do inside my square root? Factor out y squared. So I factor out y squared. So it's going to go outside as regular y. And I'm left with u squared minus 1 plus y. Now factoring the y out, I have y times square root u squared minus 1 plus 1. So here's my order 1 homogeneous, and my function of u is this square root plus 1. So this is y times, I think I used, we'll call this h two, so this will be h1 down here. All right, questions? So does homogeneous basically mean that uh, they have the same order? Basically, yes. Uh, it's a little more general than that. That's like a one, one case of homogeneous. Um, it doesn't necessarily mean it has symmetry. I don't know the best way to think about it, but one of the examples is they have the same order. Uh, they kind of both have order one in both of these equations. Uh, I say kind of because in the square root they have order two, but the square root kind of brings the order down by half. All right, so we're going to rewrite everything. So we're going to make our subs now. So on the left, our new function is y times the square root u squared minus 1 plus 1. And now my dx, I already did the computation. My dx is now y du plus u dy <coughs> minus our dy coefficient became negative, well, I could just write it as y u at this point, y u dy equals zero. <coughs> so I took the ODE at the top of the board and basically took out all the x's and made that substitution for ui. And I rewrote it in the homogeneous form, because I'm about to divide by y, just like we did before. So let's get the y out of there, divide by y. And at the same time, I'm also going to distribute right here. I don't recommend you skip as many steps as I'm skipping. You can absolutely 
probably have about double the number of steps I'm doing. I mostly choose problems out of the book, so if the book should have a few more steps, or at least maybe some different steps than I have. All right, what did we do next in that proof? It's written down in your notes. So how do we regroup? We just expanded. How do we regroup things together? So combine the dy's. We're basically looking at the derivative parts. We want the derivative parts to be similar. So now I have my dy dy. I'm going to combine those two coefficients together. So we should have a separable O to E here. And it looks like it is as long as I move, I just got to move the Y function next to the DY and the U function next to the DU. Which if you remember, that was basically the last step in our proof right here. So we have this line is what we're working with right now. And now all we're going to do is separate out by division. And that'll separate our U's and our Y's. Uh, so I need to get this out of here and all this over to there. That's what we're doing. Uh, and first, I'm going to simplify on the right a little bit. I'm going to distribute. So I get u square root u squared minus 1 plus u minus u. And then the u's are going to cancel. So we just have u square root u squared minus 1 right there. So now I'm going to divide by this more simple version. ln y is that antiderivative equals constant and all we have to do is deal with this crazy antiderivative on the left side. Alright, see what you're made of. See if you can integrate this. <coughs> Give it one minute. trig sub, you may need algebra, you may need u sub, you may need a miracle. A miracle. <laughs> I have doubts about my secant inverse antiderivative. I'm going to check back on my Calc 2 notes. I think it is. Well, if we're in agreement, it must be correct. <laughs> Just kidding. Are you pretty sure? Yeah, because the, the book did the version where it did the, uh, the first version of x over y. Yeah. 
and it came up with a uh, log of XD hard sign. Is it sign inverse? It's seven six. Here we go. No, sign inverse doesn't have that extra U down there. Or is it a hyper? Uh, yeah, I think it is seek inverse. I mean, I'm pretty sure. Chapter seven six in your calc book. So you're going to need a lot of those antiderivative uh, forms from Calc 2. I told you in Calc 3 you didn't need so many of them, but this is basically an anti-differentiation class, so you need those antiderivatives. All right, am I done? I don't know if I wrote instructions. Yeah, so solve. All right, I've got rid of all the derivatives. What's wrong with this form? So we don't need u's because u is some variable that we just created because we couldn't solve it in our heads. So we've got to unsubstitute just like the u said. So our u was y over x, x over y. Yes, x over y. use some nice ln properties so natural log of a quotient <coughs> is the difference of two logs so we're able to get rid of that natural log y So I did prove everything that we used here. Uh, however, maybe you don't believe your eyes when you were watching what I did. How would I? How would we know if this is a solution? And maybe I'm just making stuff up, and it's very convincing. No. <laughs> you can. You can certainly tell it to solve. Uh, now I want to warn you: if you ask another uh, some application to solve this, you may get a slightly different version of the answer. So for example, I don't think on this form, but there's some function whose antiderivative could either be like ln of like tangent plus secant or ln, there's like different versions sometimes, so you may get a slightly different form than what you get by hand. There's a couple of antiderivatives that have options. You could go either way. So just be aware of that. All right, how do you know if you have the right answer or not? Yep, so what do we have to do before we plug this back in? Get it in the right form. Get it in the right form. We have to actually do a lot more work than that. Well, it's only a tiny bit more work. Do you see dy dx anywhere in the original form? So where am I going to plug in y prime when I find it? So we're going to have to change the form when we want to check. Just a little bit, though. So I'm going to write an alternative. It's the exact same form. But, or exact same equation, but different form. So I'm going to divide everything by dx. So that's where your y prime will go. And then obviously whatever you, whatever you wrote down for y, I think it would be too hard to solve for y. Uh, well, what do we get? You could solve for y. You just invert that, subtract the natural log, and then invert, well, take the regular secant of both sides. So I can solve for y pretty easily. Now we'll reciprocate both sides, so we got y over x equals reciprocal of secant is cosine. And then last, y equals x cos c minus ln x. Alright, so that 
would be the version I would recommend you use. You can't always solve for y, but if you can solve for y, go for it. It'll make checking a little easier. All right, so there's our y. You find y prime, et cetera, and then you can take both of these back up to that form. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> Way back up to there and plug in. All right. That, however, is something that a Calculus 1 student can do. So this is not, you're not going to learn anything by watching me do, do this. I'm just showing you how to get things in a consistent form so that you can plug them back in and check. Of course, you have a chain rule, a product rule and a chain rule when you take your derivative. Well, the chain rule is not that bad, but you know, make sure you use all the proper rules from Calc 1. All right, as you can probably tell, things are getting more complicated. So I won't, <coughs> just like in Calc 2, I won't solve every, every problem all the way to the end. So some problems I'll solve all the way to the end. Other times I'll say, hey, look, it's separable. Where do I see that? Somewhere up here. Hey, look, it's separable right here. So in the future, I may stop right there. You know how to solve separable, integrate, unsubstitute. So I won't solve every problem all the way out, is what I'm saying. So when we turn into a form that we've seen before, sometimes I'm going to stop right there. How many times do you want to watch me solve a separable ODE? Three more. Probably three more times. It sounds reasonable. Uh, it's good practice for you to finish solving them. I've probably solved enough ODEs for a while. Oh. All right, quick question. Yeah. Um, so that original form that we got, the, if it's separable, we get like the you know, two of these or whatever. Yeah. Yep. So when we find out that it is separable, can we skip to that step and just plug in our, our two, 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 Yes. Two. So you can, you can write. <clears throat> that's a good question. So this gets into more like what's the best things to write on your cheat sheet. So you could. You could write down, so in this case, we use y over x as our u. So <laughs> I could write basically most of the things up here. And I could write this form down as well and kind of skip a bunch of steps. Uh, but then I'm going to need to write, I'm going to need to redo this for x over y. And then kind of repeat this, because in that case, you know, dx is going to become more complicated than the other way around. Um, so you can write the kind of more details so you can go from the first to the last. So but I'm just like saying, so you just basically skip all those steps where you take them. But if you find out what you think you want are, yeah, absolutely. You can write that. Yep, you can, you can write that down, write that down and kind of skip. But if you have a typo or a, whatever, a righto in your notes or. <laughs> Um, something else goes wrong, like you're not, if you skip all these steps, I can't give you credit for skipping those steps. So like generally I'll start assigning points, like as, as we go down, like you get more and more points depending on how far you go. And if, if you got this part right and this part wrong and there's nothing in between, I can't really assign you that many points basically. Uh, so it's up to you, you can put more stuff, more details on your cheat sheet or less details. Um, you're going to find the steps you do are exactly the same, which you probably already noticed. Like, we did the same steps in the proof that we did in that example, and we do the next example, we'll do the exact same steps as well. Um, I recommend that you do the steps because you're just getting a lot of practice taking derivatives, doing algebra, all that stuff. So that's, I, I recommend that you have less on your cheat sheet so that you end up having to do more work as you go. And also, if you just use formulas, you kind of skip over a lot of the details. And I think it's a bad long-term plan. It's good for, like, if I have to finish an assignment in two hours, but it's not great for, uh, it'll make me a worse mathematician in two years if I keep doing that. So it kind of depends on your goal. If it's my last math class and I don't care, then go for it. If it's not my last math class and I do care, then I'd recommend do more of the work yourself, basically. And plus, you just get faster and better at all that stuff. And I think most of you are engineers, so you'll probably be doing math for a very long time. Uh, I failed at converting any of you to mathematicians. Shame on me. Yeah, so we don't have to say good things about them.
Yeah. All right, we're going to do our last example. Uh, there are more in the book, but they're exactly the same thing. You make that substitution, follow it through, do some algebra, separate it, etc. So they're all very similar to solve. So we're only going to do one more. We could do a race. Oh, I always give you a head start. Head start. All right. <laughs> <laughs> so first of all, what substitution do you think we're going to make for you? This one's super obvious. Y over X. No choice here. So we got UX equals Y. This is not written in the form that we saw earlier. How do I write this in that uh, homogeneous form? Where's that form definition? Here we go. How do I write it in this form? Yep, so y primes dy dx and then multiply the dx across. So that's how we're going to turn into this form. <coughs> and I'm just wrapping the, uh, there was kind of two functions, but it's really just one function. So I'm just wrapping in parentheses, so it's a little more obvious that it's one function. All right, so just do the homogeneous step. The left side should be pretty clear. You've got to have an order one homogeneous uh, OD. Uh, I can't speak. It'll be an order one homogeneous coefficient function. <coughs> so see if you can transform that second function into x times, I think we'll use g2 of u. So I forgot what g2 of u needs to be. That was relatively painless to do this. Now, I, when I make my substitutions, I use whatever version is more convenient. So for example, on the y over x, I just went with y over x is u. Keep it simple. Now, I saw just a y by itself, and so I replaced it with, that's the second version I use. So that's replace it with ux. So depending on what I'm subbing in or out, I might use this you first can one. Play with that. What's that? Yeah. Like, I don't know. Uh, There's really no choice. Use either y over x or x over y. There's not a third option. You can be like x equals set. I don't think it's equal to x. I could write x is y over u, but remember, it's our goal to get y out of there. So you're never going to see in the original. You're never going to see u uh, y over u because u is a variable we made up that should not be in your original ODE. Yeah. So generally you're going to use the variables, original variables x and y. Occasionally you'll use uh, t and y. It's going to be another super common uh, letter that will be instead of x for time, basically. All right, so we got to stop it here. Uh, I'll pick this up tomorrow and I will solve it pretty quickly.